Hi everyone, you guys are back on my YouTube channel with another weekly video. My name is Brandy. I am with Brush by Brandy, and this week we're going to be working on something a little bit different for me. I don't do a whole lot of mid-century modern pieces. Mid-century modern is the mid-century, um, and usually its characteristics are really clean, sleek lines, not a lot of ornate detail, um, uh, a lot of wood, geometric designs, bold colors can be characteristics of mid-century design. And this piece that I'm working on behind me is exactly that. It's very clean lines, very sleek. So I wanted to play up on that and what little detail it had, which includes these little pinstripes that are on the drawers themselves. I wanted to leave a combination of wood detail. I'm going to be using some Dixie Belle slit silk, which is perfect for these sleek modern designs because it's a very smooth, clean finished paint. Um, we're going to add some hardware and some details, but this piece comes out awesome. So we're going to get started. Stick with me and let's see how this one turns out. Here's where I started on this piece. Overall, it's a fairly plain piece. I wanted to bring out what little details it has. This one doesn't have any hardware for me to remove, so I went ahead and jumped right into cleaning it really well with Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner. I knew that I wanted to do a really clean, crisp look on this, so I chose Dixie Belle Silk, and the color I chose is called Oyster, which is a really pale gray. It's almost a white with just gray undertones, but I love how clean and crisp it looks on this against the wood details that I plan on using. I chose silk because this piece is made of cherry, it says right on the back, and because it's made of cherry, it has the possibility of bleeding, and silk has a built-in stain blocker, so the built-in stain blocker allows me to skip the primer on this piece. This piece has a lot of large flat surfaces, so I went ahead and used a flocked roller and I just rolled on my Dixie Belle Silk. Um, silk needs, you need to work a little bit quicker with silk and it won't tolerate water as well, so to get smooth finishes, I'm just using the roller in this case. All right, I told you I wanted to bring out some of the details this piece does have, and that includes these little carved lines that are in the front of the drawers. I want to get my paint down into the recesses and then sand them down to wood um, for a contrasting finish. So the easiest way to achieve this was to go ahead and paint my entire drawer front in my um, silk and oyster. And then I came back with my surf prep sander and I'm just using a 120 grit paper and I'm sanding through the paint down to the bare wood. This is going to leave that paint just in the recesses on this piece. Um, now I did find that I had to use a milder grit paper. I started out with an 80. That was too harsh. It was pulling the paint out of the recesses. So I just changed the grit on my paper and this method worked great. I always like to assess my piece for the natural details it has and try to play up those. In this case, this piece was pretty plain, but these lines I thought were pretty cool and they really played into those nice, clean, crisp lines that I'm hoping to get with this. It's just a really fine, small detail that makes a big impact. I also really loved the wood grain on this one, so that was something that I definitely wanted to leave intact as well. I chose this white color, the Oyster, because it's going to give contrast between the wood tones and the white of the body, so it's really going to make these details pop. I always look for a jumping off point with my pieces, something to inspire my finishes. In this case, it came from the hardware, which was actually the first thing that I found. Um, and so that's where I'm gonna choose my colors and my finishes from. This piece did end up needing three coats of paint. And the reason for that is I did have a little bit of bleed through. Even after my second coat, I could still see it coming through. Um, the stain blocker in silk is equivalent to about one coat of boss. And so some pieces just need a little bit extra coats. It also gave me the coverage that I wanted. So I did a light sand in between each coat using my surf prep sander. And then I just continued to roll coats on until I got the clean, even coverage that I wanted. Had I used Dixie Belle Boss underneath my first coat of paint, I probably could have prevented one coat of this paint, but in the end, it didn't really matter. Three coats with three coats, and the roller made really quick work of getting these coats on this piece. Anywhere that I couldn't use my roller for some of the smaller edges in the front, I just came in with my Dixie Belle Mini and cut those in with a paintbrush. Silk also has a built-in top coat, so I don't need to top coat this piece. In fact, I actually chose to leave the silk raw because I love the low matte sheen of it. But on the drawer fronts, I did have that raw exposed wood and I do wanna make sure I seal that. So for that, I chose to use Dixie Belle Flat Clear Coat. I chose the flat clear coat because I love the low matte sheen of it, especially against the silk paint. Um, and then I also find that flat clear coat gives natural wood the closest to its natural wood colors. Sometimes when you seal natural wood, um, it can alter the color of it and flat leaves it closest to its natural color that I found. 
Also sealing my body of my piece, the silk is totally optional, but I think you'll be surprised if you do some tests on your silk um, as far as wipeability, it's highly cleanable. And I feel comfortable saying that because I've tested it on multiple occasions. One side of this has wet clear coat, one side is dry, and you can see how it's gonna change as it dries. So next I went ahead and flipped my piece onto its back, and I know that I wanna make the base of this piece a nice, rich, bright gold. So I'm just gonna spray it in some gold spray paint. I went ahead and sanded it smooth, and I'm just using a high quality gold spray paint and giving it a few coats. After my gold spray paint, I went ahead and came back with a clear gloss and went over the top of it. I'm going to give you guys a tip for choosing a clear gloss spray paint, and that is to skip the hardware store and go straight to the automotive store. Um, I used a high gloss clear automotive spray, and it left the base of this looking so flawless it looks like metal. Look at the gloss on that. The gold from the base of this piece is gonna pull into the little bit of gold that's also on the hardware. So I told you guys about this hardware and this is what inspired my finishes for this piece. So I do need to drill hardware holes into the front of these drawers. The first thing I did was figure out what measurement I wanted all of my hardware to sit at. I measured that out on all the drawer fronts and marked them all out. The next thing that I'm gonna do is take my hardware and I'm gonna use the screws from the hardware to choose a bit that fits the size of this hardware best. Once I found the closest bit in size to my hardware screws, I'm going to use that to drill out the holes that I marked. Each of these drawers required two holes to be drilled. There are eight drawers on this piece and my hardware only came with 12 pieces in the package. So I did need to buy two packages of this hardware. They were only about $12 a piece, so it was really reasonably priced, a small investment to make this piece really pop. I went to work drilling all 16 of my holes across the front of all of these drawer faces. I'm going to be honest, the lines across the front of these drawers made it really easy to make sure that my hardware was all in line with each other. Once those were all drilled, I threw my drawers back in and you can see what a difference this hardware made on the front of this piece. It pulls in with the light from color from the body and the gold from the base. I love these drawer pulls. But I couldn't just leave it as it was. I wanted to kind of spice up the sides of this piece with a stencil. And so I chose my most mid-century stencil that I had in my collection, which was this fern leaf design. Um, I will link this in the description for this video. It's um, from Stencil Revolution. I'm just gonna use some gold gilding wax from Dixie Belle. And this is just a generic artist brush that I had, a synthetic bristle artist brush in my collection, but it put on the um, gold gilding wax perfectly. I used a little bit of spray adhesive on the back side of my stencil. I used um, Super 77 spray adhesive from 3M is my favorite one to use with my stencils. That's available at Walmart and it just gives a light tack to the back of your stencil. You don't want to use too much. Uh, when I'm done, I can clean it off with mineral spirits, um, but I usually clean them only after every few uses. I got a little bit of my gold gilding wax across the top of my paint, and so I'm just taking a little bit of Big Mama's Butter and I'm cleaning that off. Big Mama's Butter works because it's an oil-based formula and the gilding wax is also oil-based. So oil removes oil. I can clean off the gilding wax using a little bit of my butter. This one is done. I moved it over to my staging wall and I'm gonna get some photos taken of this one. But first let's talk a little bit about what I chose for my staging on this piece. It is staging day on this really pretty mid-century dresser. I love how it came out. It has very clean lines. So everything about this piece says mid-century to me. And so I staged it with some mid-century style uh, accessories. So what I have up here is some macrame because this is the age of macrame the, when this dresser was made. Um, I have this starburst mirror that I love to use with mid-century pieces. I think it's very uh, in keeping with the era. And then I feel like the gold pulls out the gold that I've got in my hardware. You can see how my pulls have gold. And then of course, the base of the piece is gold. So everything, the metal color ties in together. I have groupings of threes. Um, so one, two, three. Also tying in the gold, I've got a gold and a white base over here. So all my colors are, are in sync. And then I use some greenery. So I didn't use florals on this one, but the greenery takes the place and it's bright, bold greenery with the monstera leaves, very tropical. Um, and I think it really suits the style of this piece. So let's get some photos taken. 
All right, I wanna point something out. These are my final photos, but the last video is taken in my natural light. And there's so many fires going on in my state in California right now that my natural light was really orange. I actually had to wait until about midnight so that I could come inside and open the doors and windows and be able to take photos without getting an orange glow in my room and using artificial light, which is not something I usually do. So you have to consider your lighting situation and sometimes the natural light just doesn't work for photos. You can find a link for everything I used in this video in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, TikTok, and my website at brushbybrandy.com.